Hi, hi all. Uh, uh, thanks a lot for joining in uh, very early in the morning. Uh, you know, I think it almost feels like, you know, these are my NITK folks. We used to wake up early to be at college around the same time. No, we never made it to the first, <laughs> first, first period to never happen, man. <laughs> it looks like, uh, you know, a few of those bunkers are joined online. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see them there, yeah. So, uh, cool. So, today, uh, you know, this is a session of a Beehive uh, startup uh, platform. Uh, where we introduce, you know, Beehive, we have access to so many startups, we interact with a lot of startups because of the nature of our business. Uh, the whole idea of this has been that uh, when we are coming across so many amazing things that are happening, uh, you know, and, and at the same time, you know, when I'm traveling and all, I know that not everybody is aware of what's happening. The whole idea was to bridge this gap, uh, you know, and uh, select very, very curated set of startups that is doing something amazing from our point of view and what, for what we are able to understand. And, and this also is something where uh, we have uh, really shortlisted, uh, we are shortlisting companies that are raising money, uh, where, uh, and, and where we do certain analysis, of course, uh, we are not a banker or something, but where we believe that, hey, it's worth putting the money. I think the simplest funda is, uh, you know, if I had the money, would I have invested is one thing I see. If the answer is yes, then, they, then, then only they would come here. So that means that they are at a certain stage, they have certain traction, uh, you know, there are certain uh, parameters we have. We, we only select those that have certain level of traction and they've already raised some money, there are et cetera. Only then I also personally recommend somebody to invest, you know, uh, you know, uh, at a certain stage, not not necessarily at the earliest stage, you know, unless it's friends and family. So that is one part. Um, uh, you know, they do match all criteria in a very very good way. You know, they are actually well above Thank criteria. You. We hope to prove it uh, <laughs> through the conversation. Right. And, nice and in fact, uh, I would say you were almost uh, ahead of it, and you were close your round. I requested that you guys, hey, you know what? A lot of our folks, I know they are. We are fellow NITK, of course, not only for NITK. A lot of others can invest. So you can't yeah. say no to a fellow NITK. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. So we kind of requested them to open it up. So they have kind of kindly, you know, they have opened up a, a round that is kind of closed, uh, you know, a, a little bit uh, so that more people can participate. From a practically, uh, just to give an introduction, their company uh, does business as e samudai uh, you know, Samudai's community. Uh, so uh, I used to hear about e samudai from last two years. I had not fully understood, you know, I knew something related to e-commerce. I think L-commerce used to speak. Uh, but practically speaking, I think I, it caught my eye, you know, what when uh, Nandan Nilekani started doing this, all the ONDC, and of course, Nandan is such a big champion. We, uh, we wouldn't have been following it as much because <laughs> Nandan is there. We know that something is happening, you know, yeah, something, yeah, something is happening. Big. Thanks, Nandan. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I actually then I started, you know, while I know Ravi so much, then I started, hey Ravi, what exactly is this? I started looking at it. I'm like, wow, you know, so much is happening, I didn't know. So today we will go over, so we have a pitch deck, uh, so there will be screen share and we'll go over the deck, but it is of course a style where we'll yeah. have conversation. Sure. Uh, you know, I think both of them are my senior, they'll go over what is ONDC, what is East Samudai, there is a lot of learning, trust me, and we will have Q&A. Anybody who has questions, keep sending your questions on the chat, there are people here also, we will uh, we'll take it at the end. After we, you know, we'll aim to do 45-50 minutes conversation we'll take it at the end. Um, uh, so, two uh, or two of the founders are here. Uh, Ravi. Uh, batchmates also. Uh, batchmates <laughs> as well from NITK. So, and you school are, classmates. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. And both are from Udupi, uh, which uh, yeah. produces all the smart people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And uh, cool. So, uh, then uh, we will get going. I think, uh, uh, you know, who, who, what's the role? Who is what in your company? So I uh, visualized, uh, I'm Anup Pai, uh, I, I visualized this because um, in 2016 I was in the US uh, tracking the Donald Trump election and I saw a lot of changes happening in the, uh, in the American landscape, pointing, in, pointing to decentralization of the economic uh, system. And uh, that was an insight that got me started in 2016, um, investing in, in companies that are working on decentralization. This is before the adv advent of Web3 and the hype around it. Um, then in 2020, when COVID uh, lockdowns happened, um, I was working, me and Ravi were both working in a NITK startup called ChangePay, uh, which was a NITK college startup, uh, which was trying to build a peer-to-peer -peer commerce network uh, within NITK. And then lockdown happened and uh, we thought that it was the time to take this model of a closed community commerce platform, a networked set of community commerce platforms uh, ac across the you know, com common population, right? And that was the uh, launch of eSamudai. During the first lockdown, we ran two trials, one in Anjangud and one in Gubbi. 
and one in Bangalore in uh, Marathalli. And then we realized there's a demand for this, but there's a lot of work to be done. So we launched it in uh, July. I, I am the founder, uh, founder and CEO, and Ravi manages business. Uh, Ravi, over to you. Yeah. So, yeah, Shish, like Anoop said, uh, we sort of uh, banded together about a year and a half ago. This was uh, right during the middle of uh, the COVID lockdowns. So the idea which had the genesis in campus from ChangePay sort of morphed into a much larger community-wide uh, effort. And uh, today we are at that stage where, uh, you know, we've done uh, tests, validated the business model. Uh, like you mentioned earlier, we have seen good traction, good support from the community. People understand that this is a business model that has multiple layers to it, right? And like we've been talking in the last uh, few days, every time you think through this model and what it can do and what impact it can have, you discover something new. And you say, hey, this, this is something amazing. This can impact and change uh, the way things are being down, done for much better, right? So that's what kind of engages me and keeps me hooked on to it. So I look after the business part, um, also in terms of fundraise and trying to get the network growing. Uh, and yeah, we'll talk about the other uh, cool, cool. co-founders And I think well. so yeah. one of the things is, I think I would say that uh, while every startup would try to say this, but I think genuinely for your startup, you definitely have a larger purpose, you know? There is yeah, a yeah, huge yeah. purpose. So I, I, <laughs> I, I like to say it, of course, this is a, I heard it somewhere, but it sort of fits with our organization. So we are not just a company with a big idea, but with a grand ideal as well. So, oh. yeah. And, and, and is it correct to say that I think uh, was ONDC and all that, was it in play or you guys were before that? So I wrote an article called Open Commerce uh, in uh, late 2020 um, and uh, in parallel, uh, you know, there was conversation happening um, in Delhi around ONDC, uh, but it was early days, the QCI had just started. And then in 2020, 2020 yeah. okay. December, okay. Uh, and then uh, 2021, uh, I did engage with uh, policymakers in Delhi in 2021, July, August. That is the that is the time that ONDC was launched, uh, and that's my job in e Samuda. I am more, uh, you know, on the policy side and the strategy. So side. you are also championing the whole ONDC and open you know, commerce, uh, yeah. and from and that implementation on the UPI layer uh, and UPI. As you know, I come from the banking world, so UPI okay. was already there, and ONDC is. I've done Swift and so on. ONDC is like Swift network within India, right? And for uh, people to exchange goods and services. Mm. Um, so the, it formed in front of our eyes. Uh, it was a big idea from the government. Uh, we watched, we, we were doing our trials. And then we joined the hackathon uh, in J January 2022. Um, and then from there, we've uh, taken on a, we've taken, put our hand up and said, we'll make ONDC work, cool. right? I mean, so so yeah, I think so. if I would summarize, right? I think when UPI came, mm -hmm. uh, right? It, uh, the way I see is, uh, right, there was a lot of interaction with the industry. This is not one of those projects which just government was doing somewhere, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, that's why like there was industry captains, there were companies that are going to use it that participated yeah. during the process, and and UPI is super super big success, right? For the government of India, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I think the way Mastercard, Visa, everybody's yeah. shaken up, right? I we mean, all hope to make UPI. ONDC bigger than UPI. <laughs> <laughs> ONDC can become, and you know, during the you have actually been part of that process, and I would say you're part of the process. ONDC is something that is just like actually, coming. Oh, Anup right. is being a little modest, so what he usually says during our meetings is, ONDC followed us. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, I mean, yeah. see, everybody in the world is thinking the same things, and as, if you see the ideal on which we are based, large platforms and corporations cannot control our destinies. I mean, our, we as individuals have the right to choose, and uh, that's where decentralization really fits in. I mean, decentralization as an ideal is more about I'm presenting, presented with the choices and I can then choose with, between that. I can't be a participant which is gamed into behaving the way the platforms are making me behave, right? So that's mm -hmm. the awakening that I think most of our civilization is happening right now, is, is going through yeah. right now. Yeah. Okay. And uh, that's the ideal we're chasing, right? And ONDC and UPI even, I think is a, is a hugely decentralized protocol. Uh, coming from Reserve Bank of India. India has got the best public digital infrastructure in the world. China might have technical work, but they're using it against their people. Here in India, our digital infrastructure is used for the people by the people, right? I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's the ideal of our country. And that's why I believe that India is at the point where we can leapfrog into the Web 3.0, using Web 3.0 and other 
to become the world's largest digital economy. We are already that in terms of information. Now, in terms of business, we'll get there. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. I think uh, I think that's what technology should do. Uh, I think a lot of times we have probably not seen everything, right? What we have been seeing is large corporations getting created in various uh, segments, yeah. uh, and not everybody is liking that fact that they are controlling so much, yeah, right? Absolutely. Uh, you know, and and really, I think uh, maybe I think now we are on a path where the empowerment to individuals or smaller entrepreneurs uh, you know small entrepreneurs are extremely important part of democracy in my view Absolutely. and and i really see that i think uh, what you're doing is Our really country <laughs> has got 6 crore small entrepreneurs i mean and we miss them out i mean these are you know running small businesses and right now the covid has really put the squeeze on them I and mean, that's the I mean, that's what, you know, really drives me. I mean, how can we yeah. make this an even playing field for Where them? The and billionaires that's made more money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, they only became richer during pandemic and Absolutely. the poorer. Yeah. And, and the smaller businessmen actually lost really a lot. Really yeah. suffered a lot. Uh, yeah. Right? I, yeah. think, I think this can really change a lot of things. Uh, so, uh, so we have the pitch deck. So, uh, we'll, we'll, I think people uh, are here. Yeah. Why don't we start going the deck? Uh, sure. uh, I would let you pitch. And, yeah. and probably I'll just summarize for others and if you have any questions from a viewer's point, I'll, I'll ask. That'll be good. Shesh, yeah. Um, yeah, please, uh, we would like your feedback as well as we go through this. Um, so, <clears throat> the problem statement, I mean, in general, I, I touched on this. Um, so, we can do screen share. So, the, uh, the platform um, model that started around 2005. For a second. Yeah. So, around 2005, we started seeing um, monetization of information. Um, before that, we had information being money and banks uh, and financial services organizations had already networked the whole of the financial system. Um, uh, let's go to the next slide, uh, Anurag. What we saw happening over 2005 and 2020 was um, the creation of the platform business model, uh, which had, in my opinion, um, a very simple business model trying to become a monopoly in every field they touch, they want to become a monopoly. And that's called extra... Um, Entice. I mean, they've got a lot of VC money. Entice consumers into or participants into their platforms, and then once you got uh, economies of scale, you got those participants locked in. COVID really locked in a lot of participants. You then start extracting from that ecosystem, and then eventually, as a monopoly, you start exploiting. We've not reached there yet, which is what e Samudaya is trying to counter. What we're trying to do is we're taking the same platform economy but decentralizing it at a local level. So you, you run the same business models but do it in Udupi, do it in Chikmagalur, do it in... Uh, these are local digital platforms that can operate at the platform model um, uh, at a hyper-local level. Um, and that's what we call uh, uh, you know, our Web 3.0 or in yeah. e Samudai we call it Web 3.5. But <laughs> so Decentralized and distributed. So, distributed digital economy. Yes. But okay. who's running this? I mean, this is something that is important to know, right? In India, we've got a huge youthful population. And I, I spend a lot of time in colleges, uh, especially NITK. Uh, you talk to the students and they're saying entrepreneurship is something that is attractive and driving them today. They want to start their own businesses, right? But, you know, how many new ideas can you dream of? I mean, how many people can raise those uh, millions of dollars from VC, right? But there is these opportunities to make a change using digital using digital businesses. So we've got something known as a experience entrepreneurship program, EEP, right? So this is not just Gyan, it is actually giving them tools, giving them a business to be able to operate, become operators, experience this for six months, right? And uh, these guys set up something known as decentralized autonomous organizations, uh, which owns their data. And, uh, uh, and these, these companies are promoted by these young digital entrepreneurs, young meaning uh, young at heart, uh, people who want to, <laughs> want to uh, you know, start a business. Once you get an entrepreneur... Uh, I would yeah. uh, say, uh, if you go back, so uh, one slide back, I'll just... Uh, so, so basically you are essentially, you are helping, so entrepreneurship uh, program, uh, the, what I understand uh, from this is, as a summary, you are helping people go digital. Uh, right, a lot of smaller digital entrepreneurs, uh, many yes. are not necessarily digital, yeah. uh, and you are helping uh, create entrepreneurs. One more level, um, we are creating digital entrepreneurs who will then go into the ground and make small sellers go digital. It's an assisted tech adoption. Okay. Because in India, my insight is just somebody downloading an app can take you for so long. You need that assisted tech adoption, right? Uh, okay. Especially for the next segment of um, producers to go digital. These guys, the digital savvy entrepreneurs, the EEP program fellows, they go out into the uh, into the uh, you know uh, towns, 
and assist small sellers to go digital fully, digital first. Uh, so that's a two level. Uh, so these guys become the local swiggies, local urban claps and so on. Okay, okay, okay. cool, cool, makes sense. We've came, come up with a concept called e-commerce, uh, which is a, a co combination of traditional offline retail that India has got and e-commerce. So Im imagine combining the e-commerce uh, platform uh, you know, models with the traditional offline uh, retailers. And we see that on all factors that matter to consumers, we as uh, e-commerce outperform e-commerce uh, because we've got the strength of the local offline retailers on our side. Only on two factors we are not able to compete, which is the discounts, large enticements that uh, these platforms offer, and this width of assortment. But the width of assortment doesn't really matter because relevant assortment is what really matters on the ground. So the, the local offline retailers have got so much insight on their consumers that they stock their the stock choice and all that is is bang on, right? So. With e-commerce, we are able to bring a model run by entrepreneurs. That's a big part, right? Um, a Swiggy operations manager on, in Udupi will always be beaten by an entrepreneur who's running his own uh, hyper-local delivery uh, you know, system. And that's the uh, e-commerce model. And, and uh, I think to quickly put in, right, I think one of the things I think about all the you know uh, VC funding is like heavy discounting, right? That's yeah, not yeah. really uh, burning I mean, money, uh, and that's stopping uh, now. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, that is stopping, and yeah. of course that is uh, that is not sustainable. Yeah. And you you are taking a, a, a more clear approach that there's a clear value that is being yeah. created, yes. right? And, yeah. and you are not like putting billions of dollars in that sense. <laughs> to burn. It, we don't need to because yeah. that model is now done. I mean, uh, even the profitability has become a thing with the VC industry and the VC funded companies in the last two three years, even before COVID. They started talking profitability, mm -hmm. and now I think it's a level playing field um, overall. Um, so that's where we are. So the intent is to create value within the ecosystem rather than extract value by throwing discounts and stuff. Yeah. So the segment we're going after is uh, India is a one trillion retail um, um, uh, kind of market right now, out of which modern trade, uh, which is your whole Moors and uh, future groups and all of that, um, and uh, e-commerce uh, have taken 170 billion. And that is ex accelerating uh, post-COVID. Um, so we've seen a big migration to digital platforms um, in tier two, tier three, tier four India. Uh, but there's still $830 billion worth of uh, trade that happens in the traditional offline uh, ecosystem. Um, and this is spread across so many different cities, so many different sectors and so on. In phase one of our rollout, which started uh, uh, July 2020, uh, we took on the goal of democratizing digital commerce, digital marketplaces. And we are working with ONDC now to address this 830 billion market opportunity using e-commerce. And e-commerce, while it is local, is also the Indian style of trade. The Indian style of trade was not transactional. It was about building a relationship with your buyer over a long period of time, maintaining those khatas. I remember the khata, I mean, uh, you pay, uh, buy now, pay later was, uh, was uh, part of Indian uh, style of trade, right? And, <laughs> and Web3 with distributed ledgers is superbly aligned with uh, the Indian style of trade. So the e-commerce method is essentially the Indian style of trade, Indian style of being in the new world, and that's uh, that's that's what okay. is working for us. Right? So, uh, so I think there are a lot of interesting points on that. I would like to comment. Sure. Uh, one is that so India is one trillion dollar retail uh, market. So that means every year there is one trillion dollar worth transaction just in the retail, yeah, right? Yeah, Not yeah. even considering other yeah, parts yeah, of the yeah, economy, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, out of this. Basically, 17% is organized yeah. between e-commerce like Amazon and uh, modern Flipkart, trade, and plus the modern trade, the organized yes. uh, retailers yeah. whom we uh, uh, who supermarkets are and so, the big okay. large Chroma stores. and, yeah. others, and yeah. the regular the 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 not organized ones are really at 83%. Right, yeah. it's quite yeah. a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and probably the percentage is bigger in smaller towns. Yeah, and these are right. all your local businesses which are family owned. And they all work the entire family, or you know, mm -hmm. the they work in the business, so they depend on it for their livelihood and employment. Okay, that's uh, uh, cool. And uh, I think uh, because um, we are referring to ONDC a lot, yeah, I think I, those who are not familiar with it, maybe we'll just have a quick. See, my understanding is it is open network digital commerce yeah. being spearheaded. The face of it is Nandan Nilekani and Piyush Goel, right? I, the I, face of it. I'll give you a quick uh, snapshot. It's meant to be. It's a. It's a. It's a private. It's a SPV under the uh, Ministry of Commerce um, called o ONDC Corporation, and um, it is government. It's a government company, 
um, headed by currently headed by a guy called Koshi. He's um, um, uh, yeah. Thumpy Koshi, and uh, the shareholders are the banks. So if you look at the blueprint, it is exactly like NPCI. Right. So NPCI is a is a com is a company for, uh, you know promoted by the Reserve Bank of India. In case of in case of ONDC, um, Ministry of Commerce DPIIT, the Department for Promotion of Internal Trade um, is promoting this company and has got shareholding by the banks. NPCI has also got okay. shareholding by the banks. The, um, the objective here is to be able to create an open protocol, common protocol, which can, which, if me as a software uh, provider, a software uh, platform provider, is able to adhere to those protocols, anybody else can discover my messages and understand my messages and process it and reply back to me. Uh, just like UPI, uh, uh, but it is complex because it needs to ca carry what the catalog is, what the order is, what the rules of the of the transaction are, and so on. So it's a, almost like the SWIFT messaging platform for trade finance that banks use globally. Um, you know, letters of credit and uh, you know, bill of lading and all of that uh, in the banking world. This is almost on that uh, uh, that kind of a layer. Uh, it started getting built uh, January of this year. Right now, the focus is on uh, groceries, um, you know, uh, fruits and vegetables, meats and fish, food, restaurants, and so on. Uh, but if you if you broaden this, it can actually cover any buying and selling that happens in the in the marketplace. So that means anybody that has got any digital platform, any software platform. Uh, serving either the sellers, buyers, or the logistics providers can plug into ONDC and become a participant. Uh, and it's an open network, which means that there is anybody can do it. Amazon can do it. Uh, Isamudai can do it. Any new startup can do it. Um, for example, Sanjeet uh, Speed 9094 Batch and uh, others, we are promoting a travel network on this. Right? So any, any hotel can come use uh, ONDC. Any experience provider can use ONDC. And this can layer on more and more things as we go. Yeah, on. That, that's amazing. Yeah, cool. Cool. I think that, that's, that's great. Um, I think we'll speak. I think you have more yeah, yeah. e-commerce, so, uh, I think, yeah. I'll explain more, right? Yeah. yeah. Let's go to the next slide. Um, so we took this concept. We needed to make this work. And uh, we were not in a hurry. I mean, uh, we are not in a hurry. This needs to happen properly. It needs to happen at the pace the market is picking it up. We ran a one-year pilot in the, in the town of Udupi, uh, which uh, me and Ravi came from. And we went there. We didn't want to, we want to make it hard for people to join the community, as in we don't want to just go and sell something to them. We made, so the sellers, for example, pay us money to join the network, right? They, they don't get any lollipops or uh, incentives from them, from us to join. So they believe, people, the believers started coming in, and that's an amazing story, one year in Udupi, so over to Ravi to talk through. Yeah, thanks, Anu. We call it a living lab. Living lab, yeah. 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 So, uh, so basically, uh, what I understand is that you're kind of taking us through a case study kind of yeah, scenario of yeah, what yeah. exactly you guys did in Udupi, Udupi. Yeah. Yeah, uh, right? And and how, so that kind of helps us relate, yeah. right? Uh, you know, what, what can Isamudai do actually in the market? Right? Absolutely. You said it correctly, Shesh. So what we, are, what we did in Udupi was two things, validation of our business model, the framework, and also develop theories and what we could do so that that becomes a template for replicating across districts in India, right? So um, we have spoke about how we are talking using Web3 as, as a um, uh, principal driving force for our business model. And Web3 is all about autonomy, ownership, and decentralization. And that is what we said we will implement in Udpi here. So it is an independent company. It is run by entrepreneurs on the ground. We have a small team of about five people who are running the operations. Uh, like we said, the intention is to unlock uh, economic potential that is lying hidden in these small towns and districts across India. So I'll talk about a couple of cases as we go forward. And e Samudai, the larger goal is to act as the catalyst for fostering entrepreneurship, for fostering creating growth, and that growth which creates value is retained within the local ecosystem. I, That's I, the key thing we are driving here. We are I not saying we'll extract word. it. I heard a new word, catapult. <laughs> catapult. Yeah. So somebody growth. said you are a catapult, not a catalyst. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's possibly <laughs> true. Say so we are both of them. <laughs> yeah. So we've spoken about this already. Creating value locally. Uh, we are open, so any entrepreneur can take our tools, 
and uh, use the open API, use those tools to create further modules which can then create customized use cases in their town, right? So for example, if you wanted to create an app which is for paying a specific bill, yeah? A entrepreneur could add that facility and say, hey, now you don't have to go and wait in queue, you can pay it online if it is not available, right? So that kind of functionality, flexibility. And the local uh, engineering colleges uh, we engage, so um, uh, Manipal Institute of Technology, we engage the students there. They built, uh, they built a ride-sharing, uh, a cycle-sharing app. Yeah. Um, so th this is an ongoing engagement with developers because eSamudai doesn't want to build all the apps that can come in you know, because the future is unknown and uh, innovation needs to happen and on the ground. At a large scale. So, so yeah. uh, each of the locations in Udupi engaging the student de developer community is a part of the uh, strategy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is a quick snapshot. This is quite self-explanatory. So how does it work? So what we are saying is we are giving you the business in a box. It's a digital business. We have uh, the apps. We have a sort of a panel to sort of monitor the business. We have four apps. We have a merchant or seller app. We have a consumer app. We have a delivery agent app. And we have an app for services. Right? And then the entrepreneur who's sort of running the whole business gets a uh, admin console or a dashboard which indicates how each business is doing and what business needs promotion, does the uh, the local store need some help in digitizing their business, cataloging, features, all of that. I just want to put in one key part here, the control panel that uh, Ravi talked about which the entrepreneur sees is built on a low code platform with a vision to go to no code, right? Okay. So we want uh, these applications to be rapidly, the workflows, the rules and so on, to be built by non-technologists to be able to create their own rules on the ground. It doesn't need, should not be a you know, monolithic application hard-coded by Isamudai and plonked on to these towns. I'm a believer of no code. I think no code is going to be the future. And these entrepreneurs need to be able to customize and build their own stuff on top of it without knowing how to code as well. Okay, nice. So this is an interesting uh, slide. It's uh, there's so a. This is really the text. case study, right? This I is really the case a, study. Yeah. Yes. So uh, right of of a journey of an entrepreneur, you know how you were able to help, and 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 how the entrepreneur was able to you know work with the platform and and get the end results, right? Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Probably I think uh, if you would go through the story, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I will Please go through the story. Yeah. Yes, so it talks about how the platform, when used in the hands of, you know, enthusiastic and a keen entrepreneur, with a small team, can create a huge impact in a town by helping the businesses there to digitize and make them feel that they are part of this whole change that's happening, right? So we had uh, Sri Lakshmi, she was a 23-year-old student, returned from Latvia, she had done her studies there. And when she came back, it was right in the middle of, uh, you know, the second wave, COVID happening. Mm. And so she wanted to do something and then one of the ideas uh, she hit upon was food delivery for senior citizens. Mm -hmm. And then she realized that could also extend as a service to other uh, residents as well. And so they started building and this, was, this all happened very organically. So the team got together, they started uh, engaging with the community uh, on the ground, talking about how the app would help them to order help the local businesses which were being hurt because everybody was ordering online, right? Mm. And nobody was ordering from the store next door. Yeah. And their business <laughs> was being taken away. True. So you don't want those businesses to die. So they started engaging with the community, explaining how it would make a difference to their lives. People understood, starting from 10 merchants, key merchants onboarded. So it's kind of like saying, okay, the key merchants are on this platform. We, we also need to be on this platform, right? Mm -hmm. So people started from 10 merchants, it went up to 25, 50. The number of orders starting from two to three orders a day went up to uh, a few dozen a week, went up to uh, 100 a week. And uh, wow. just to continue along the story, so on the way, they did a lot of community engagement activities. And all this fits into the Web3 principles, right? of decentralization, community ownership, this you one, have an aligned goal. So one, she yeah. was not developing uh, any of her app, etc. No, no, that's not, everything not was all done. It's, so the key insight here is Indian society has got pre-existing strong social relationships in the, fab, in the social fabric, right? Uh, the current digital business model is to come and recreate it uh, from scratch, right? I mean, by offering discounts and creating a sort of a 
our model is we, if we can just discover those relationships, then the network grows organically through those relationships. It's much stronger. It's sustainable. It stays forever, right? So because it's it's a continuation from the past, and that's exactly what has happened. The WhatsApp connections people have got without any marketing to reach uh, whatever six thousand participants uh, in the yeah. network yeah. Um, who are uh, you know engaged. And uh, Ravi, you should talk about how we engage the communities. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So. The uh, thing is, so this was in some ways one of the world's fastest growing real world DAO, right? It's decentralized, it's autonomous, they operate as per what the needs of the community are. And it's an entity based in Udpi, run by the people of Udpi. All the employees there are from Udpi, Anup and I who helped set, up, set it up also are from Udpi. Mm. And uh, this gives you an idea of uh, the upper portion above the horizontal line is how the orders and how the customers have uh, grown over a period of time. You can see it's it's an upward growing this. So this is the overall Udpi from, uh, you know, in, in that one year. In the one year, correct. And uh, Anup spoke about the engagement. So there's been a lot of engagement via social media and also on the ground engagement in terms of, uh, you know, uh, cooking competitions, photography competition serving the policemen during lockdown. So they really sort of became a part of the community. And this is something the big platforms can never do at the local level, right? Yes. So what, what does this translate to? This translates to rapid customer acquisition. And at a district level, you are able to quickly onboard many, many uh, users of the platform. So we literally reached uh, 6,000 people in 12 months, probably one of the fastest growing uh, this in a small town. And our cost of customer yeah, acquisition back, is very, uh, yeah. very low. So we're so we not missing a zero on the right side, right? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically what you're saying is, uh, at, in e-commerce, like uh, you know, we know Amazon, Flipkart, and so many others, they are on an average spending 500 rupees to- At least. Uh, you know, at least 500 rupees to acquire a customer. Whereas in L-commerce, it is only 50 rupees, yeah. right? But, but how is that possible? Because they already they are already connected, and somebody trusted to them is is recommending them to the platform. This is almost working like a referral scheme without us incentivizing. So because you are referral. essentially so the essence of e-commerce is so there is a community involved. Yeah. Because there is a community, yeah. the people know that there is this Udpi thing, and yeah. I am an Udpi. Yeah. I'm I would you know, and people would actually talk to each other and join. Yeah. You right. know. Yeah. Uh, right. So so that that's amazing actually. Yeah. Yeah. So what I do for the platform because it's an Udpi platform will ultimately benefit me. So the benefit will come back to me. So that's how they stay, uh, they continue. And, with and the now platform. with the tokenization program, I think yeah. the benefit will actually come back to me. Yes, yeah. ownership. Next slide. Yeah, so this is a quick snapshot of some of the things we did uh, for community engagement. Um, really wonderful seeing the response we've had on the competitions, uh, working with the local police, uh, uh, supporting local talent, all of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so next slide, please. Yeah, so I spoke about a couple of cases where you can unlock economic potential in uh, a local place, right? So one of the things we identified was tourism. Udpi is known for its beaches, it's known for its heritage, uh, the cultural richness of uh, Udpi, the food. educational institutions, the food, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the food, Udpi restaurants. So now, if you look at it, who best and we've seen this trend, right? People moving from a sightseeing kind of based travel to experience based travel, right? So the more matured seasoned traveler wants to experience what the local place has to offer. And who better than a local resident to offer a rich experience for the visitors, right? So if you have a platform that curates these locally created food related, culture related, experience related, uh, events, then people will say, let me book it on this platform. So what are you doing now? You're shifting the revenue accrual from platforms that are based outside to a platform that is owned by the local town, right? So all the wealth now comes to the people who are, so the hotels get booked on that, the local taxi operators, the restaurants, uh, the local home kitchens, the experience providers, all that. We intend to drive traffic to those local digital platforms. Um, so a lot of times, so that decision making uh, is kind of driven a lot more local, right? Yeah. Yes. And see, one of the key problems I see with uh, uh, whether it's right or wrong, a lot of the bigger ones, 
uh, you know, they kind of decide, hey, I'll go to the city, then they'll decide I'll go away. They keep doing all these random things yeah, quite often, yeah, yeah. where yeah. a lot of local entrepreneurs, they're just taken for a ride sometimes, yeah, right? I mean, so the, the big difference is uh, a Bangalore-based startup trying to do something similar would use Udupi as a stepping stone to something greater, right? Yeah. But uh, here, this company, Udupi Samudai's role is to be in Udupi and serve Udupi across verticals, right? The only thing that this company thinks about is the benefit of Udupi, right? Not, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, expanding elsewhere and so on. And then each company, if they start thinking about that district, like for example, Udupi, there are, what are the revenue drivers or what are the big parts? Tourism is a, is a big revenue driver there. Fish, like Ravi will talk about, is a huge, uh, you know, natural resource that is caught there. Why can't that money that is uh, generated through that activity stay there, right? I mean, that's the whole concept of e-commerce. So that's the e-commerce and decentralization. ONDC also, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think I had a doubt. See, when UPI was launched, I don't think they said, hey, I'll launch it to this city, this city, right? Because I was interestingly of seeing ONDC yeah. saying, I'm launching in these few cities, then I'll extend. Because I think the entities are very city or a town specific, yeah, right? Because so Udupi Samudai yeah. is independent of, uh, let's say, Mysuri Samudai. Absolutely. Right? right? And yeah. because, you know, ONDC is also trying to help these 83, 830 billion uh, trade, right? Which is getting shrunk or, or squeezed because of this platform play. ONTC's role is also to unlock value there. And then you have to think, then most of the trade is hyper-local, it's local to local. So uh, that's where the thinking is going, right? So yeah, so fish. So this is an interesting case story. I want to throw this question open. Does anybody have a guess of what is the kind of daily revenue in fish that Malpe, a small fishing harbor in Udpi does? Chesh, you want to take a guess? Malpe has very nice beach. <laughs> a lot of smell, <laughs> but yeah, daily. I mean, it's, I mean, I'm mean, be like. Okay, so daily, it's anywhere between seven to eight crores, wow. right? And that's the kind of value that's that's, that's money coming out of the sea. <laughs> that's money coming out of the sea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah seven so. to eight crores, and what's happening based on the current uh, way of distribution is this value is sort of being sucked out by agents, sub-distributors, main distributors before it finally reaches the markets of let's say Bangalore, Cochin, Calicut, uh, Mumbai, any of one of these places. So what we are saying again is if we, if the local digital platform in Udpi incubates a fisheries DAO and if they help them to create a local processing center, which can, you know, which can process brand the fish. So we've incorporated here with the local fishermen and local boat owners, incorporated a brand called Malpe Me, okay. okay, which will now process and brand and package and sell this fish directly through our platform to users across the so is, is that like a, some, some kind of cooperative uh, thing? It's and, and, and all the technology support and, and, and beyond technology, some so, so uh, there's a clue here, the use of the word Malpe and the use of the word Udupi also um, identifies the produce with the location, right? Yeah. The GI kind of uh, happens there and they are from Malpe, it's, it's fish coming out of Malpe, right? And uh, so they are able to use that uh, GI tagging to be able to uh, increase the value there. And this is applicable across India, there are a lot of great products that are, that are very, very specific to the region, right? And how, why can't the value of that, the brand value of that, go to the region rather than to platforms and other, uh, you know, uh, network? Uh, so, Anup spoke about Chamaraj Nagar earlier. That's where we did Jaggery. And we see that there are out of some 300 uh, small alemanes which produce Jaggery. Yeah. The daily value is about 9 to 10 crores. Wow. So, it's mind-boggling the kind of, you know, businesses that can potentially be made It's Chamaraj Nagar and Mandya put together is 9 to 10 crores. <laughs> Slightly faster. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's move. So this is the roadmap. So what we are saying is how Udpi can sort of become the app that impacts every resident and household in Udpi. And we are talking about uh, mobility services. We are talking about curated content by, uh, you know, yoga instructors, teachers, trainers, cooks on the app. And then local news, which is curated and ranked by relevance. So then, so Udpi Samudai app sort of becomes the go-to app for anything related about Udpi. So you can think about the living lab becoming sort of like a beacon to the rest of the districts that are getting launched right now. We'll talk about the rollout program that we are going through right now with ONDC, aligned with ONDC. 
um, uh, so the Udupi Living Lab is giving us clues for what we can do and then hopefully innovation is going to happen in other locations as well. Cross leveraging of, of knowledge and experiences can happen because this is a networked environment. While Udupi is separate from Mysore, Udupi can learn from Mysore, Mysore can learn from Udupi. That is, that, that's exactly what, what's happening right now. And I just want to take a minute, Shish. Uh, we spoke about how ownership can also be distributed, right? So, and that is the token part. We'll talk about it a little later. But that is how we can... Uh, yes. And that's how the people who participate and live... ...become owners, right? Let's, yeah, next slide, please. So let's talk about the rollout now. Um, ONDC, I mean, and I'm going to talk ONDC in the rollout program, right? Uh, ONDC is now aiming to get to 100 cities by August 15th, uh, Independence Day. Uh, and uh, to do that, uh, you know, uh, we are kind of uh, aligning. I I've uh, taken October 15th because it's a very aggressive target <laughs> that ONDC is set up. You have changed October 2nd. Huh? October 2nd huh? will be better. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> so we talked about ONDC. ONDC has this goal um, and, uh, you know, the goal, the missions are aligned. We are saying democratize uh, digital marketplaces. They are saying uh, that entire initiative is saying democratize digital commerce. Um, so, our LDPs, local digital platforms, play a crucial role in ONDC. What ONDC is doing is, the, the buyer can come from Paytm, let's say, or phone pay or whatever. Um, the seller can come from uh, GoFrugal, eSamudai, e multiple seller apps that exist. The logistics agent can come from Dunzo or, uh, you know, Shiprocket or whatever, right? Now, who will confirm this transaction? The three legs of the transaction needs to be confirmed and settled, right? The money flow needs to be settled. Uh, so now, the local digital platform, who is the local trusted agent, right, the, the, is, becomes the settler, right? And also uh, play, takes on the role. Um, right now in India with the VC-funded startups, there's, a, there's a, a lack of ability to reach on the ground in small towns. Um, our model helps, uh, you know, ONDC reach small towns. For example, in Shillong, uh, no, no Bangalore-based startup or Gurgaon-based startup was, reached, uh, was able to reach there. But Isamuthai managed, managed to set it up because we had a net... I mean, so we, entrepreneurs yeah, do it. That's amazing. <laughs> so uh, so um, that part is what we are uh, doing. And we believe that if we are able to do ONDC properly, this provides, and Web3 aligned with ONDC properly, this provides India a leapfrog opportunity. I mean, so far we've been copying from the West or we've been building, uh, adopting technologies from the West. I mean, now our model, our Indian style of trade in the Web3 format can become the, uh, the model that the West can follow. This is actually community living. I mean, this is what everybody wants. What do we have going for us? We've got great public infrastructure, like I said. ONDC is the, is the newest one on the block. And there's more down the tube. We've got account aggregator, we've got open network for uh, credit, all of that coming up. Plus, we've got the youngest, most energetic population. And these, these guys, the, the future of work, the new guys that are coming, they're loyal to one thing and one thing only, their passions, right? I mean, not, to their, uh, uh, not to their employers or whatever, but to their, their passions, right? And that is a great combination. It's like... Uh, uh, Magic. Um, so, if we are able to hit this properly, I believe, and this is a, uh, since anyway all the, uh, the economy is measured in uh, monetary terms, and monetary terms are human decided uh, structures, India can be, and it is all digital anyway, India can be a 30 trillion uh, dollar economy uh, GDP wise in the 30s. That's it, the ambition, right? Yeah. I think uh, what the government of India trying to get to is by 2030 mm. uh, you know if, if efficiencies are brought in we yeah. can become a 30 trillion dollar economy yeah, yeah, yeah. and e samudai and, and these ondc initiatives are a key part to really achieve this is that yeah. correct yeah. And, and it should not be just e samudai it should be innovation that happens at uh, multiple levels right and e samudai is just laying one idea one uh, framework right yeah. and the distributed uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. commerce yeah. Yeah. Is, is a key right yeah. if not yeah. I, I really think you know the small entrepreneurs are not really empowered yeah. uh, you know there will be a lot more billionaires but we may not go to 30 trillion uh, yeah. <laughs> in the next few years there should be such shows in lucknow in ranchi <laughs> everywhere <laughs> you know yeah. everywhere yeah. right so and yeah what's driving it is web3 and a lot of uh, other things in india i want to pick on three main factors digital density We've got high bandwidth networks, we've got smartphones in most people's hands, 
we've got diversity diversity is the driver of decentralization standardization is a killer of decentralization diversity is a driver of decentralization we've got the diversity and we've got the demography we've got a young youthful population that is driving it um, now what are the factors we are we are bringing together right web3 um, so far web3 and even the government of india thinks web3 is cryptocurrency is an nft right i mean it's gotten such a bad name right and one of my at the time i spend is to explain to people boss i mean web3 is just the internet in it's the old internet Different. coming back right, right. A, this is just the old internet coming back it's not form. anything new right and, and blockchain is just another way of mediating that trust right i mean uh, we had link lists and everything back in those days as well and this is just the blockchain is a link list uh, with a cryptographic layer on top right mm -hmm. web3 is really something which is a old internet decluttered from all these powerful moneyed interests that have taken over the internet right local economies using web3 tokenized local economies can really explore uh, you know economic activity in every location so that's the um, so how does it work yeah. so if we go back uh, yeah. quickly uh, uh, i think so basically i think so tokenization is uh, is a key part to uh, bring lot more capital into the system yeah. is, is what i understand local and capital uh, yes into the yeah so somebody from mysore somebody like me yes. i can contribute to mysore yes. economy and and still you know not necessarily donate contribute yeah, contrib but i will also kind of get value out, out of it back yeah. right and 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 i think your key part is really promoting local economy exactly yeah. right? that's that's all we are doing right okay so um, what are we doing first thing is the local digital platform i explained the model explained the work we put into to and the living lab we have in odupi um, second thing is funding these activities right um, if we can tokenize it people can participate with 20000 rupees 30000 rupees 50000 rupees whatever right to be able to uh, you know empower entrepreneurs in those local areas and uh, local business models right how can you create network network local business models so that kind of brings together local digital businesses bringing up local community and one drives the other right i mean uh, community feels rich yeah. the money flows back it becomes and, a virtuous cycle of growth mm -hmm. right scaling out um, 100 cities are now um, list is almost ready um, um, and actually uh, we'll be the first company to actually put a list of 100 100 cities that we will uh, go to and that list should come out by june 15th Uh, we are figuring also, out also also you are kind of uh, have a road map to go to 100 cities yeah. like very soon yeah, yeah. 100 yeah. districts 100 yeah. cities yeah yeah 100 yeah 100 places and uh, and the udpi model is telling us that how to do it right i mean because these are all you know since they all live in one place it's it's easier the, the, these to reach these people and the networks now we know how to oil right i mean uh, um, the sellers can reach a network each seller has got a network each promoter has got a network so that is um, moving i mean so it's just a matter of replicating what we're doing in odp in multiple locations um, there are a few key elements it is all people driven it is and this is the reach out to everybody if you believe in uh, this mission find people who believe and uh, in uh, who are already in those locations to mentor these young startups uh, the way uh, let's say ravi and i did in odp we need people in different locations to mentor right and the uh, and the the entrepreneurs do a fab job they do, they uh, they can take this from there and move forward yes this yeah. can um so this is what we are doing we are uh, the platform is built ondc interface is already done we are identifying local entrepreneurs okay. through the eep program uh, which we are running through incubation centers uh, so we are identifying 100 incubation centers uh, just like in udupi we've got manipal uh, universal technology business in incubator we've tied up with them similarly in other districts okay. we tie up with those incubators so and so the the right most part is they're setting up a new local company that means in district you're creating one company correct and the token is linked to that company right that yeah. company and okay. that district yeah. okay of that district okay uh we are not uh, yeah, we are helping set up uh you want to talk about the tokens and yeah, the, yeah yeah so so we've uh, the umbrella brand under which we are sort of developing this program is uh, aham so aham as you know is i the ego and which is an essential part of an entrepreneur to you know say that i am going to work on this and develop this mm -hmm. because this is mine so that's how the idea aham came about and uh, what we are saying is we'll roll out these tokens for every district across india so like you said shesh there'll be aham mysore tokens there'll be aham 
Udpi tokens, Aham uh, Raipur tokens, all of that will be rolled out. And these tokens will enable uh, funding for people who are connected to that district, right? Like I want to say I want to support Udpi and I want to help it economically. So I will put in whatever amount I can. And the residents will also be able to participate. So going back to what I said earlier about Web3 mm -hmm. and it being all about autonomy, ownership, and decentralization, mm -hmm. this is exactly what we are doing, right? So it's ownership, ownership for the people in that town to be able to say that this local digital business, I own a part of it, so I should support it. So that's what we think will drive the whole uh, program. Okay. So busy slide. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. at, the, at the center of this is 748 local digital platforms, but that doesn't end there. These platforms, local digital platforms, incubate hundreds of DAOs under them. So there could be, just like in Udupi, there's a fish DAO, there's a tourism DAO, and uh, there is a, a you okay. know, restaurant DAO. So basically, so. you see, what you, at a district level, you'll call it an LDP, yeah. uh, right? LDP is also a company, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. that has its own uh, mechanism to be financed, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Then there are multiple DAOs, yeah. like, you know, an individual entrepreneur can build a DAO and plug into it. Absolutely. 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 And the DAO doesn't right. need to be linked only to one LDP, it can be linked to multiple LDPs as well. So, the, okay. uh, because autonomy, right, you can, you can work wow. anywhere. Mm -hmm. So, it just becomes an incubation facility for anybody with, an, with uh, a local business idea, local business digital idea. Um, e Samudai works on both ends of the uh, local digital platform. We provide into it... Um, um, uh, mentoring, technology, networks, and so on. And we also provide token exchange, token clearing house. And we pro we charge, um, it's a very simple uh, revenue model at eSamudai. Anybody selling anything on eSamudai pays eSamudai 200 rupees a month. That's all, right? So um, in the eSamudai network, um, if, if you're in the network and you're selling anything, 200 rupees a month is what uh, you pay to remain, uh, to be on the network. It's almost like contributing into it. We've got other revenue models, uh, so uh, which that, will come that to. money is uh, goes to the local platform. Uh, the, no, to to Isamudai have to run and yes. super nominal amount. Yeah, right. That, yes. That's really amazing. And uh, yeah, uh, so we take 200. The local digital platform can add on to it, just like a reseller of a SaaS uh, reseller, and they can charge other services as well and commissions and so on. So the local digital platform is pretty much like a. So there are different decision makers at LDP level? Yeah, it's, okay. a, it's a full private limited company, there's a board of directors, there's an incubator that is guiding them, there's a bunch of business mentors. Okay, uh, so while it's a private limited, yeah. it is like that NCPA, it, it's, uh, it, is not, it is not intending to make profit, right? Its goal is to build a flat, you know, build, it, it, uh, is that correct? It will make it, profits, it will but make the profit will remain in the, yeah. in the yeah. system. So yeah. it, it's driven by, like we said, being yeah. decentralized, local ownership, distributed ownership. And it will have a um, goal of, you know, a collective benefit. Yeah. It's not okay. necessarily driven only by profit. While yeah. it will be a profit-making entity, the principles are decentralized like how, principles. Uh, you know, educational institution work. Yeah. They do make money, but yeah. it's for the purpose but of education. The closest cooperatives would be a good example. So, a okay. DAO is yeah. pretty much like a cooperative. So um, the way to understand it is what happens in the circle stays in the circle, right? Yeah. Okay, so it doesn't amazing. leave the circle. And then the circle decides how the money is reinvested and reused right. and so on. So it's more circular. Um, we talked about the revenue model. It's simple enough, uh, but there are beautiful opportunities that open up as the network grows out. It's pretty much like ethereum.org, um, which is a blockchain network, but we are what I call Web 3.5, which is uh, uh, taking Web 2, Web 3, merging it and making this beautiful, uh, you know, and putting model. a real business model on it. Mm -hmm. uh, pe some people like to call us 2.5, but I say 3.5, uh, <laughs> because 3 ho gaya, 3.5 ho gaya. Okay, and yeah. so, uh, clearing house, kar we, we do a clearing house, we become a gateway for DeFi, decentralized finance enterprises, for example, when people talk about DeFi, I say, Kibaz, what's different? Chit funds are DeFi, DeFi institutions, right? You can digitize chit funds and other institutions and plug them into these uh, local digital platforms. That becomes local money su supply as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got uh, local search engine opportunities. Uh, today, Google is a cluttered uh, search engine, especially when you're looking for something local, right? This can become a curated local search engine. It can become a media uh, entity. It can become a, uh, 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 yeah, so all the opportunities on, uh, on um, consent-based advertising, marketing, all of that are, uh, are, are, are opening up. As we start thinking more about privacy, 
we start thinking about sovereignty at an individual level, we start thinking about data sovereignty, whole of these uh, opportunities open up. And that's what we, I mean, as civilization, we've started realizing that we can't be gamed anymore. We, we are taking back that sovereignty, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I would quickly go back to the tokens. Uh, just Yes, I think if we kind of stay here, uh, I think, um, you know, I'll kind of, um, uh, kind of uh, put in what I understood. Sure, sure. Uh, I think uh, because you guys are in all the time, I want to make sure everybody is able to get it also. So uh, basically, there is a tokenization mechanism, right, to understand how it uh, plays. This is my understanding is that. So let's say take a UDP example. There is a company uh, which is an, you know which is uh, a separate company, not your company. Yeah. You're supporting yeah, it yeah, at yeah. A UDP level. You create that runs the LDP. Yeah. Well, many people here can be on the board of it, etc. Whose whole absolutely. purpose is to support that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So since you are so you as e samudai as a larger level you are supporting creating multiple ldps absolutely yes. now the the way uh, you know many here right uh, let's say you gave you know somebody is here from udupi yeah. right they one is that hey they want to invest in e samudai that's a different thing they yeah. can kind of do it today yeah. but any time in future or any time is like you know hey i want to bet on udupi Right, yeah, I know that you know. I want to, you know. Beautiful. So they are going to invest into the LDP directly yeah, into the and yeah, get yeah. tokens in return. Yes. Absolutely. Right, yes. and and essentially, and they are not necessarily doing a charity in that sense. They are support, supporting Investing. local commerce. Yeah. There and if the. LDP grows, their money also grows, Absolutely. right? The token yeah. has more value, and you have a clearing house to facilitate the trading. Yeah, wonderfully put, Shesh. Is, is that correct? Wonderfully put. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so uh, we think about the tokens. You can also call the tokens some e shares. E shares is the easier, um, you know, a more uh, current term to use. And these uh, local tokens are are an index to the digital economy of that town. The better the digital economy of the town is doing, the in, the tokens are showing in value, right? So as a, so right now the program the way it's rolling out we will be in let's say 100 cities sometime this year or faster um, and then um, uh, the tokenization program follows right I mean, um, and this is when um, the aham of each district is discovered mm -hmm. right and then you are able to and uh, I'm actually also connecting diaspora into it because invest in your hometown, invest in your uh, you know, communities. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. it's a it's a program that will tokenization will happen sometime around Diwali, I guess, uh, uh, this year. Okay. And then so that's when you will start. You will be able to, uh, you know, actually people. I, I'm sure many here have the urge to put in some money into yeah. their own. Uh, they can uh, actually you know? pick and choose and say that okay, I I come from this district. Let me invest. Okay. My wife comes from this district. Let me let her invest there. Okay. Yeah, that kind of a thing. So that will happen in another few months, right? A few Actually, months. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but um, also the way this is working out is uh, we need we need to have some way of valuing uh, these uh, tokens and these uh, companies itself, uh, which is what e Samudaya is. I mean, uh, currently working on. I mean, uh, so an valuation of an LDP. Yeah. Is a mechanism that needs to be that needs to be right? discovered, and uh, okay. it needs to, and there needs to be governance that needs to set into a blockchain, uh, okay. because uh, we can code it up, but then till it is, I mean, just like we did the UDP LDP Living Lab, we need to code up the re governance rules, the uh, the voting uh, uh, on, mechanism. because yeah. the whole part of Web three is good governance. We can't just uh, you know, okay. so cool, cool, makes makes yeah. sense. I think we can go back to the end towards the end. We were where we were slides. I think we have a question. Where we were, I think, so that we can finish the deck, no? Yes. So, Ravinder, if, if go, Ravinder yeah. is a 2011 batch NITK. Um, so, Ravinder uh, comes from Delhi um, and uh, he, was, is he coming today? He is coming today, okay. a little later, yeah. Okay. So, He's watching this uh, online, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Ravinder, me and uh, Ravi got together during... Uh, uh, late part of 2019 um, to to uh, bring up change pay which was a company in a campus like i said um, and then uh, as the lockdown started happening we decided to take it to the next level so um, the three of us came together and did that then two other people joined us um, yeah, we'll go further uh, on the next slide so we had uh, sudarshan who joined us sudarshan is uh, is an HR professional um, who is helping us build the network out. So he's because we're working at it almost like a recruitment process, right? I mean the entrepreneurship uh, process. And Meda uh, comes from ITBHU and uh, um, uh, worked in the fintech space, worked in my previous company, and she manages operations and uh, uh, the whole program operations uh, that we are uh, that and the tech operations as well. 
Uh, that makes up our uh, five member team. Uh, okay. We've we've built in governance from day one, so it's, there's no dependence on each one of us has got a role to play, and there's no uh, you know one side. Uh, so it's a board decision usually. All five of us um, mm -hmm. you know take a board decision, um, and that's how I think we want to develop this as a you know uh, institution rather than um, uh, as a built for sale technology company right okay. so and we've also built the cap table in such a way that we want to bring more and more uh, like minded individuals in the cap table with the vision to make maybe making it a public company at some point in time it will be hugely profitable if this takes up yeah. okay. um, so uh, because we don't have the costs of rollout and so on it's all decentralized right so um, it could be be a public company as well uh, if everything goes well and we we are now already building to that right the governance uh, stuff like that. We've been very frugal, uh, so, so it's been two years. We've not, uh, and there's no point in going out and you know beating and chasing and all of that. So uh, initially, it got funded uh, uh, our own resources and friends and family and so on. Uh, then uh, uh, this uh, you know last uh, three four months back, we said okay, we'll get to a point with those hundred cities because. ONDC was starting to show promise, um, and then therefore we went out in the market with a 10 crore raise. 10 crore, you know, <laughs> I mean, with uh, it could have, I mean, it could have been, but we want to make it uh, believers only, right? <laughs> so uh, and um, we've, we've uh, you know, that round is almost done, and uh, Ravi can maybe. I, I see that you guys have got huge support and. Uh, in fact, uh, you were saying I have closed my round and I, I was like, hey, you guys need to raise a little more. <laughs> a lot of NATK folks are coming and of course there are many others. Uh, I think um, I, I'm really glad that uh, you opened it up because I think uh, many here, uh, you know, who have come here also attending, many would want to support this. Um, you know, and, and at a parent company level, of course, they cannot come later. See, while they can always in future invest into LDPs, investing into East Samudha is something, you know, some of the savvy guys would want to do. I think you opened it up and also you are quite subscribed, you know, and, and very little left, you know, and, and uh, that's, uh, I think it's one of our criteria, you know, to select, you know, the, there is momentum that shows that you are able to raise money, your story, you know, there is a lot of smart people who have understood the story and, and your momentum, that's really great. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and uh, you know, thanks to Rajshekar, this event was happening, uh, and uh, yeah. I think the we connected. So yes, and, yeah. and in your busy life, and I know you are like uh, all over the place. So yeah. for you to take the time to understand, it's a little complex what we are trying to do. It's yes. like multiple layers. And, yes, it has a uh, lot of parts. Yeah, yeah, so yes. It's uh, and, uh, yeah. But but I think with the uh, you know government of India backing in, and you know not just about government of India, somebody like Nandan Nilekani stepping in, uh, right? Uh, you, you know makes this uh, the probabilities of making uh, because if this becomes big, right? I mean this is going to disrupt the way commerce is done in the globally, world globally, yeah, globally, globally right globally, i mean globally. uh you know so basically you know i think this is super ambitious yeah that i want to give just uh, one of the use cases uh, shesh and this is really interesting so change or transformation can be in response to whenever there is say tension in a given system right so let's take a specific example of the restaurant uh, delivery business you have the restaurant providers you have the platform aggregators you have the delivery agent in between. If you look at this today in India, there's tension everywhere. The restaurants are not happy, right? The delivery agents are uh, not happy because they are underpaid and overworked. The platforms want to grab more and more consumers at any cost. By the way, shareholders of those platforms are also not happy. Not <laughs> happy. <laughs> exactly. So there's so much tension that it's a system that's ripe for change. And believe it or not, we've had the Udpi a restaurants association president talking to us saying give us your platform we'll take it we'll brand it as the udpi restaurants association platform and we'll run with it why do we need an external platform so it becomes our own platform the delivery agents the food delivery the charges all of that is decided by the people who are stakeholders in that system right it's a beautiful response to a bad system and that is now operating. Most uh, opponents to this kind of thing says it's cartelization of the producers. But then I keep responding saying if the producers don't produce, 
what will you eat right yeah. <laughs> so i mean it's finally uh, but you know even the producer doesn't want to overcharge i mean there's always been some sort of a fair play that happens right transparent pricing i mean indian consumers are very savvy i mean koi overprice karta hai to main agle shop mein chala jata hu right so yeah. you don't uh, so uh, there i think natural dynamics of our economy will play uh the if the producers and one of our core principles is producer first there has been no digital platform that has gone out and saying yeah. hey, uh they are either shareholder first or consumer first right yeah. so uh, uh here it is producer first and because it, the fabric of our society is more of us need to become producers more of us need to make something right i mean that i think will really bring back that that happiness in our lives yeah. right mm. that that's amazing and uh, Uh, i think this is definitely something i think uh, most of the people would be uh, wanting to support and uh, and i think so much tension which is out there and i think uh, you know overall i think at every district level you know having entrepreneurs i know i personally know entrepreneurs who are in restaurant business etc the amount of tension yeah. uh, which is there right uh, i think that kind of i think somewhere there's a protest against one central decision making that happens somewhere else yeah, yeah. Uh, you know you know if you remember like charlie chaplin movies like metropolis etc right the the that is a kind of capitalism that people don't want Born. where exactly. one person sitting somewhere is just controlling everybody yeah, right yeah. Uh, i i think this is uh, this, this is still capitalism but it is kind of distributing Distribute. the whole yeah. decision making and and like reducing the tension yeah. uh, right uh, and in that sense so i think so here yeah. what we've seen is typically you have corporations which are pyramidical in nature right the people at the bottom are doing all the hard work but who has the best view the person sitting at the top right somewhere away from the this and then they enjoy all the benefits so what we're saying is make it more circular make it more distributed so that everybody reaps the benefits okay awesome We have we can go to questions. Uh, questions, yeah. Okay. So other so thing is, so I think we will definitely share the deck with everybody who has done the RSVP. We have the email. Everybody, anybody else can obviously uh, reach out to them as well. Yeah, so we questions. questions are there. Uh, what I'm saying, yeah, we'll definitely go to the questions. This is uh, you mentioned, Shesh. Uh, if people uh, want to get uh, in uh, touch, who yeah. wants to invest? Yeah, we'll go to the questions. Before that, uh, as a the slide also has the uh, contact details. Uh, anybody wants to invest, obviously can directly contact them. Please we'll feel be, free. <laughs> yes. You know, we'll uh, okay, and then we will go through questions. And um, Anmol, have you you have been sharing it, right? Okay, I'll just uh, open it up. Give me a second. while you doing that shesh uh, uh, thanks for this and it's a great initiative i mean yeah, uh, we, yeah. there is a few more that we will recommend <laughs> yeah definitely definitely please please you know so so we'll have shesh's own talk show now <laughs> <laughs> thank you so let me pick up so um, i think uh, from uh, money i'm assuming our money of uh, nitk so question e samuday is only uh, is the only option for smbs who are struggling uh, uh you know who are struggling to compete with the monopolized segments what is the process to take a specific district like kolar so the first thing is uh, we need to find people called business mentors and these are people like us let's say who want to who take on this goal of data sovereignty for kolar for the kolars uh, for kolar as a district how do we take on digital sovereignty as a cause and then uh, we go out and work with the incubation center to then run a eep program uh, it's a call to action okay. to apply and then we select entrepreneurs from there they mentor them so yeah so i would take it as that he is interested in kolar now yeah, yeah. what does he do yeah. uh, he, he has he, to he calls uh, me and, uh, uh, and and and, and uh, you yeah. kind of guide him how to kind yeah, of and, so there are multiple and, roles he can play money money can either become the like he said he can become a mentor or an advisor he potentially could become the entrepreneur himself he could become an investor so start building the network mm -hmm. which sort of initiates and then the company is incubated a private limited company and then the ball starts rolling exactly along the lines of the wp model okay okay nice so you already have a lot of takers <laughs> yeah. so so uh, sujan web3 tokens are taxed at 30% yeah. plus uh, upcoming 28% gst yeah. how will it grow in india whether it is uh, uh, incorporated in singapore or you are you doing any tax efficiencies no so i am a believer in india right mm -hmm. so uh, all these entities will be in india so uh, so while i'm calling it a token it is nothing but an e share right so uh, and uh, it is actually a share in that uh, ldp that is that is traded not traded seen on a digital uh, platform a blockchain 
but the actual transaction is a share exchange transaction right which okay. is done as part as part of a private limited company share shares share sale or a share buy right which is governed by roc uh, uh, which is clear governance written by roc and we've got chartered accountants who will do that transaction okay. the blockchain layer is only a mirror mirror cap table that is helping us see the governance and the transparency in the whole process so while we're calling it tokens it's not it's not tokens in the way cryptocurrencies that are creating okay. gas so uh, a, a real uh, paperwork activity of share transfer is happening, happening behind the scene the, behind, yeah, the right? behind the scene okay. triggered by certain events right yeah so this gives just like a, a private company investment correct so. it's an unlisted, unlisted private private exactly. limited exactly yeah. yes okay but in the long run you know as we go maybe some day tokens will only be there of right course. in that sense so, exactly I mean, it, so it, the it, government how the space will evolve based on how okay, the government of would. india is already talking two things uh, social impact exchange uh, they're talking about small business uh, i mean already there is a small uh, small cap exchange um, and they're also talking about ease of doing business right and raising money and managing money in a private limited company is the most broken uh, process in india right now right mm. fully <laughs> so all these three factors can be fixed if we use blockchain effect effectively and that is what one of the things that i will start doing i mean we have to start talking about how blockchain can be brought into real life rather than uh, you know something that is used for speculative games right? okay okay next year hopefully we'll see so a uh, question from uh, manu there are checks and balances in the legal framework for today's cooperatives yeah what is the legal framework for the governance and management of the individually created daos i mean to ensure that the capital used to tokenize is not misused yeah i'm assuming uh, the the uh, capital uh, token is not for dao right? it's for ldp so to so begin the question with, itself to, is to, no no to begin with uh, the question is valid in so far as if an ldp picks up money and then buys uh, a house i mean the promoter buys a house with it right yeah. uh, that's a possibility um to do that what we're doing is first and foremost that ldp is inside an uh, a technology business incubator right which means that uh, there is uh, some amount of oversight that we are seeing that will happen and then we've got a, a panel of business mentors uh, who will include chart, uh, legal and compliance prof professionals uh, that's a separate network that ravi and i we are developing a, a national network of legal and compliance professionals who will be involved with every uh ldp, LDP. right mm -hmm. and then the tokenization program will go to the daos as well um, but the same governance process will uh, will 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 repeat right okay. so we are setting an example in uh, in in so far as how to deal with fiat money i mean so mm -hmm. uh, and the governance of of uh, taking in investor money okay um, and uh, you, you already talked about nandan and uh, the infosys example of governance mm -hmm. i really believe governance is something that uh, will will put some of these risks to rest okay right? so the the creation of ldp itself you guys will also play a bit of a role you will know the board and uh, yeah. who's kind of getting in yeah. i would assume yeah. right yeah. okay uh, i think uh, audience here have been uh, giving certain questions um, i think uh, uh, maybe uh, very quickly you know not every one of us know what is web3 um you know what exactly is web3 and uh, you know where all it's being used sure so uh, to explain web3 i'll start from internet um, several computers common exchange protocol tcp ip and uh, then a layer above it uh, which is html which was able to exchange uh, textual and uh, content information but there were still independent computers any computer anywhere in the world could connect with any other computer anywhere in the world with a unique address the url right uh, then web2 was a bunch of companies with lot of money put a lot of computers together and created a single ip and that is a platform model redirecting everything to large data centers and then the and processing the data right the, collecting the data and processing it it was not just a decentralized network Web three is this plus that in my uh, in uh, so there is decentralization of uh, platform infrastructure and blockchain uh, being a data exchange layer that is coming um, above the uh, network layer. Um, so the uh, the network layer already exists. The software layer is now was was centralized in the platform era, Web two era, decentralized in the uh, Web three era. um and blockchain being the uh, the data layer so if i could just take a minute shesh to sort of from the users perspective so web 1 was all about just reading right your interaction was very limited to accessing information 
Web 2 is you could read and write. You could sort of interact to a certain extent. The platforms came. You could be part of certain communities. So you had the Facebooks, you had uh, Google, LinkedIn, all those kind of things coming up. But still it had the problem that it was very centralized and it was extremely, like we spoke earlier, value extracting. Your data was not in your control. Your data was what gave the platforms the valuation of billions of dollars, right? But you had no say over how it would be used and why it is being used. Web3 is an evolution Natural evolution, I said, right, transformation is an adaptive response of tension in a system. So people have realized that this is not something that will work and which is sustainable. So Web3 is a natural evolution of people who has, want autonomy, who want ownership, and who want democratization of the internet. Yeah. So it is something that will pick up. So here you can become part of what is known as the creator economy in Web3. Mm -hmm. You can create things and you can own it. And the one more thing is, uh, read, read, write. Now we've got read, write, execute. And because own. The, um, yeah, and own. Um, because of the smart contract layer and see the same time period technology has evolved. Networks have become high density and we've got uh, edge computing, uh, IoT edge computing that is uh, and smartphones, uh, explosion of smartphones. So with blockchain and smart contracts, the logic can be embedded in the front end layer. In the past, the software infrastructure was Everything till the nth, the bottommost layer was only collecting information. The logic happened in the back end. The data remained in the back end. With uh, blockchain, the whole thing is inversed. So the logic and the data is in the, in the front and then everybody else are agents to confirm the transaction. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the key part for today's discussion would be Web3 is a key part, especially from your goal of decentralizing the commerce. Yeah. Web3 is something that is going to keep, play a key part. Yeah. Right? And, and that, that is, is seems like it's irreversible now. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, right now the use cases are cryptocurrencies and NFTs, but uh, real world use cases are, so I went to the uh, crypto conference in Miami uh, this in March, and the, the crypto world is now saying we need real world use cases and we need governance, right? Uh, and I come from the reg tech regulatory technology world, and I'm say, I, I always said that uh, cryptocurrency is a money laundering uh, exp expert and thing, and what it needs is uh, governance. I mean, the technology is good, but if you want to really make it work, you need to have some sort of a regulatory framework on it. Right? Mm -hmm. So, and that is what Isamudaya is doing by us. So, let me run through. I think a few more questions. If we, we can go fast if we can sure, finish. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, I think one uh, good question here is, uh, you know, as of now, we are using, say, uh, Paytm and phone pay for local purchase. I go to a market. That's what we would use. Uh, you know, you know, with evolution of Isamudaya, is that going to change? And if yes, how? Let me take that. Yeah. Um, Paytm and phone pay are two of the major uh, participants in ONDC. So their uh, Paytm has already released the functionality. It's only in a, a closed group right now. It's in beta. So on the Paytm app, you can get Swiggy-like features. Swiggy-like features. Uh, so you can discover. It's a location-aware uh, functionality. It will discover local sellers, Guptaji stores, and um, other sellers that are around you order from them and track the order in a location aware where uh, way just like swiggy um, a paytm is going to have that functionality it is going to be powered by ondc in the back end there is a, a bunch of actors the sellers the delivery agents and so on each supplying data into ondc phone pay will follow suit quickly mm -hmm. uh, the but banking purely if the question if yeah. i reverse back to the question purely around payment yeah. will there be new players coming in for payments because of this or are the payment is really payments, here, uh, payments right? are mean, done in my opinion i think payments are uh, is a is a done done thing okay yeah. okay so that lending might uh, yeah so they might get yeah they'll it get into evolve, commerce yeah. we'll uh -huh. have to wait and see yeah okay so uh, so if i would uh, take in uh, is the next question is a key benefit uh, for a consumer on e samudaya that the consumer can buy from retailer known to her without having to visit the retailer prem, uh, premise is, is that the key that is one of the benefits def definitely you know the uh, retailer you know the person who's selling it to you in case of you know so there's trust and you're leveraging that trust to do an economic transaction Mm -hmm. And if there is an issue in terms of returns, all that can be easily resolved. So okay, okay. Locally, yeah. Uh, oh. I think yeah. Uh, to add to that, discovery of uh, discovery of the local uh, seller and the and the uh, the re reduction in pain to be able to buy, right? So the efficiency of the, mm -hmm. that's what it is. 
the experience you're getting with uh, Amazon and Swiggy that uh, you're getting with your uh, local retailers as well. Okay. And uh, uh, next question, do you organize your platform at a district level and then aggregate into state, country, etc.? First of all, it's not our platform. Mm -hmm. it, so <laughs> it is a <laughs> district's platform. So it is aggregated at that district level, mm -hmm. right? So they, like we said, it's based on these decentralized principles. So they decide what kind of businesses they want to create, what kind of DAOs come yeah. about, what, how, how does it fit into the local scheme of things. So it's, it's their own yeah. decision at that district level. See, if I would may, may add, the way I understand is, you're not saying, hey, the, the district, state, country level in that sense. You're helping create multiple LDPs. Yeah. Beyond yeah. that, they take the decision. Yeah. Yeah. So, right? yeah. But one more thing I want to say is, uh, eSamudha is a network, right? So um, it's a network of platforms, um, and each platform can be big, small, medium, whatever, right? Um, and it's to, for the rollout, we've taken the decision to go to the district level uh, because uh, the gov government of India is also organized at the district level. So the, every district has got like administration, right? Okay. So we want to be able to do it at a district level okay. first. So uh, I think question from Anup and uh, Deepak. Uh, okay, so this is, uh, um, e-samudai sounds more like a public utility translating to public good. How does your firm um, and uh, entrepreneur make money? Everybody makes money. <laughs> so we spoke about the revenue model, right? Mm -hmm. So it's basically based on that. The entrepreneur at the local level has a subscription fee, has transaction fees, can create multiple revenue streams. It uh, depends on advertising, depends on the entrepreneurial ability of that person. There is plenty of uh, opportunity. e Samudai, we clearly said we are looking at token clearing house fees and we are looking at a flat fee of 200 rupees per month per merchant. And, and because the number of merchants you are targeting is huge, huge. right? So that 200 yeah, rupees yeah. per month can translate into a lot Large and the token yeah. itself can be huge. Absolutely. Right? And that's monthly recurring revenue, right? Yes. And uh, 200 rupees per month. Per month. Per so uh, what is the investment required for starting an LDP? So the seed capital needed for an LDP is uh, between 20 and 30 lakhs uh, to start right? uh, and to get to operational uh, stability um, and then there is a need to raise between 1 and 5 crores um, 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 to be able to create an ecosystem and then there could be a need depending on um, you know, how uh, to raise another round. And that's how the tokens start seeing value when there are uh, you know, further issuances of the, of the tokens. And the next round is uh, to move to that full super app uh, you know, framework at the LDP level. They could raise between 10 and 30 crores uh, at that point. So there's a, there's, a mile, there's a white paper that's coming out soon, which okay. is going to be talking about how the, the evolution of an LDP and how the tokens um, start mm -hmm. to, e-shares uh, start to uh, get offered. Right? Okay. So while those numbers may sound a little large for someone talking about a local business and saying that we have to raise it money in crores, what we have seen and what we have you know, sort of validated is that the business in each district, if it is aggregated well, has the potential to become a unicorn. Mm -hmm. Every district literally can have its own unicorn or even multiple unicorns depending on how the business and how you start, uh, you know, identifying opportunities there. And okay. in Udpi, we clearly see a path to a unicorn soon. Wow. Yeah. Local, yeah, local, local, local ecosystem, digital ecosystem. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Including, we are saying that the data centers should also move local. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you're processing data locally, you can host locally as well. You can save on this whole bandwidth uh, yeah, know, yeah. and data storage usage, data processing. And there's opportunities as that happens. I mean, somebody can set up a data center, somebody can set up an analytics unit, somebody can, all of that, right? So, um, uh, next question is, uh, 30 trillion from 3 trillion in 10 years, um, you know, are we reading it right? You are absolutely reading it right. Uh, <laughs> so, the, the, there's something fundamentally changing in the monetary ecosystem. And we are not, we, we, I mean, and you saw how cryptocurrencies went from 0 to 4 trillion in, what in a period of uh, and I know it's like speculative, uh, but at this point the monetary ecosystem is going through a sea change, right? The 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 concept of money itself is going through a, a sea change, right? So uh, and if it is just about valuing yourself as an economy in a U.S. dollar, which is a man-made construct, let's understand the U.S. dollar is a man-made construct. 
if you're just valuing yourself in a man-made construct, you can value it at any number. Uh, and, uh, and I think uh, uh, as, a, as an economy, we have the strength to be able to find that. Uh, now to get to that part, uh, there is the, and it is all digital eventually, right? Um, uh, first we need to get to the 5 trillion, which I think will blow past by 2026, 20, 2026 hopefully, uh, 2025, 2026. And then there is this uh, rewiring of the digital economy, I mean, like we said, I mean, as the capital starts flowing up. L let me give you an example. If a board apes uh, GIF can yeah. sell for $5 million, uh, why can't uh, India be a 30 trillion economy? Mm -hmm. So it's, we are moving into what we call as the imagination economy, right? So if you can imagine mm -hmm. it, you can do it. So <laughs> yeah. that's the kind of goal. And what you're saying is, uh, to summarize, right, see, there are a lot of different infrastructure that are, like UPI was one of the examples. Yeah. Right. So, like, you know, post-2025, you would expect a faster acceleration of growth. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's yeah. all digital anyway, so. We're yeah. okay. reaching yeah. escape velocity now. <laughs> and um, uh, so, next question, is e samudai supported by central government because it is in line with Atmanirbhar Bharat? If yes, how? It's, we, we are not supported by any government institution. We are another company that is understanding the, the trends and aligning and maybe even participating in policy through our voices, right? It is just articles we write, uh, you know, conversations we have. Um, there, there is no uh, support of any kind. There is, uh, we are a private limited company that is operating in Bangalore. But one thing is for sure, uh, we are all bullish on India. We, we are Indo India files. I mean, we were saying, boss, this country is our country, this country will teach everyone. Right? Uh, and this traditional knowledge, when it goes out, it will change its value itself because this colonial mindset has to go. Right? And if that feeling uh, aligns with the current dispensation, political dispensation's feelings, I mean, yeah. great. I mean, after, so. yeah. that's, that's amazing. So, uh, I think, yeah, so basically, uh, I think um, it just, uh, um, I, I think uh, either a coincidence or the timing has been so perfect that the exact initiative government of India is trying to do is, is something you have been on to. Yeah, uh, or, yeah. or you have also somehow <laughs> yeah. uh, probably helped their own thought process uh, and they have aligned. <laughs> I just yeah. want to say yeah. that over the last two years, I mean, I, because I spend a lot of time with people, uh, you know, trying to think this through, there's so much serendipity happening. People are finding, uh, uh, and this is not just India, and globally as well. There, I mean, the, the people have told me I've been thinking exactly the same thing, right? It's a, uh, I think there is something strange going on, something magical going on, something uh, divine maybe also going on. But uh, India's time is now, I truly believe uh, and that. also a bit and of our hard work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we had a, a recent uh, webinar where we had a um, chairperson of a corporate practice group of a US law firm who joined Anoop in a talk on Web3, DAOs, and, and this. And he's worked with uh, DAOs and uh, Web3-based organizations across the world, right from, uh, you know, the East all the way to the West, Mexico, Europe, Africa, India. And he said e Samuda is, is a very, very good example of uh, implementation of a real-world DAO based on Web3 principles. So we kind of had an idea, but it was good to have that validation, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. That, that's very, very interesting. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I don't know if you have more time. I think the sessions would start, right? Um, the next, I think we would have to probably... Sure, sure. Get it's to that. And there, anyway, there... Uh, yeah, but I'll take one quick question. One, one quick question. Since you're working in operating for the last couple of years, can you talk a little bit about customer feedback or customer appreciation? Something you'd like us to... Okay, I'll just quickly repeat because I have, we have the mic. So, uh, uh, you know, I'll repeat the question once again yeah, for yeah, the yeah. viewers also, exactly. right? So, uh, so basically, it's, uh, given that you have been operating, what kind of customer feedback you have been getting, any appreciation or anything that you can comment on? So, so first thing is, who is the customer for, for eSamudai, right? The customer for eSamudai is the sellers, is the producers of India. The small producers, small sellers, small distributors, they are, they are our... Uh, they are our customers, Priority. right? I mean, if we, so, if we solve for them, they'll solve for the rest, right? Uh, the second one is our entrepreneurs, right? The the ones that are running it, but uh, you know we don't treat them as customers because uh, you know they better. <laughs> so the sellers, the restaurants of Udupi, for example, right? 
initially um, you know they i mean they said okay bahut marketing lagega swiggy wiggy bahut hai um, but give it some time and uh, more interactions uh, more interactions uh, and then um, the restaurant association president sought us out right i mean it is not as if i mean they had all banded together they done their meetings and they said okay now we know that these guys are here to uh, to stay uh, and then uh, they they are now saying we will I mean, they actually came and said i have a plan to stop swiggy and zomato for a week and change uh, people's behavior right i mean uh, we didn't give them that idea they 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 had the idea and they came to us right because we know that the tension is there and uh, so it's a matter of staying the course i think so that's the power of you know local ownership and democratization they see it as as an extension of their yeah. own business cool cool i think uh, i think you guys are around anyway so yeah, yeah, yeah. more i yeah. think amazingly i think it has run out of questions a good huh? length a uh, lot of questions we will start off yeah so cool i thanks. think this uh, thanks so thanks a lot have some mercy on me also <laughs> man <laughs> yeah thanks a lot i think this is a hybrid session i think so very good presence here as well and yeah. a lot of participants i think this had a huge amount of rsvp uh, right. i thank I you so much for closing out on your round uh, you know next two days <laughs> <laughs> that will be wonderful we'll let you okay, know great, thanks great, so much thank thank thanks nice. for, thanks for having us thanks thank everyone you. yeah is nothing but a community of people bonded together either by geography a common shared sense of belief culture purpose tradition it could be a mix of those factors uh, there is uh, a more and more consumer demand for uh, unique products that are locally made by local artisans and those are uh, uh, you know efforts that can be supported through uh, marketplace technologies platform technologies e samudaya is basically saying start right now everything is ready all you need to do is get your um, you know attitude and your um, connect with your local consumers and um, you know uh, getting discipline into your operations early remove the cognitive uncertainty of starting a business there is no uncertainty everything is available to you there is networks that are that want to support you there is capital that is available to help you to st get started and grow and then there is obviously the technology that you don't need to worry about uh, to build from scratch that's what i uh, saw happening i saw this need for um, you know young entrepreneurs to get started there's a huge demand for digitally enabled services in local market and um, that was the genesis of ee samudaya it's sort of the confluence of various factors coming together technology Uh, people's approach to things, and and the way the market is ready to receive uh, such an idea. I think we are all at that tipping point, and and it's a great time to implement this idea.